Hi everyone! In this video, I'm going to talk about multiple input neuron, which we call perceptron. Uh, this is the single input neuron that I talked about in previous video. Let's go over this one a little bit. So in the single input neuron, we have the P as input, and we multiply this P with W, and uh, we plus uh, bias at the end. So this net input is WP plus B, and this net input n is goes to this activation function. And if this n is below than the threshold, then this activation function returns the lower value. And if this n is over or equal to the threshold, then the, it returns very higher value in this activation function. So this a can be 1 or 0, something like that. But in the reality, in your brain, actually the neuron gets multiple inputs. As you can see, there are more than one dendrite in one neuron. So how can you achieve this multiple input in our neuron? So here's one example. So now we have two inputs here. And we can have more inputs here because one neuron can have more than one input, can be three or four. But the calculation is very similar to the single input neuron. So we can just multiply P1 with W1 plus P2 plus W2. And we eventually add this bias. So this net input is P1 multiplied with W1 and P2 times W2 plus bias. So we can say W1 P1 plus W2, P2 plus bias is going to the activation function. And if this value is over than threshold or equal to threshold, uh, it returns a high value. Or it returns lower value if this value is lower than the, the threshold. So here's the one very uh, interesting example. So let's say you give either apple or ball on blind robot's hands. And let's let's talk about this one. So how the robot can distinguish apple or ball on his hand? So first, let's say this P1 is shape and the P2 is texture. So how the robot can guess if the object is ball or apple? So let's define the input features first. First, I'm going to say shape is 1 when the shape is round. And I'm going to say the shape is 0 when the shape is not round. And I'm going to say the texture is 1 when the texture is smooth. And I'm going to say the texture is 0 when the texture is not smooth. For example, the apple. Apple has shape round shape because the apple is mostly round shape, right? And uh, I'm going to say the apple's texture is smooth because the apple's texture is mostly smooth. But the ball, even the ball shape is round, but the ball texture is not smooth, it's like a rough. So we can distinguish with shape and texture. So since the apple shape is round and the, the texture is smooth, I'm going to say, I can say it's 1,1. But the ball is round shape, but the texture is rough. So I can say 1,04 ball. And I'm going to define the output. If the output is 1 from the robot, um, for, so perceptron, then 1 means apple. The robot predicts uh, apple if it is saying the 1. And uh, if the activation function result is minus 1, then we can, we can say that the robot predicts the object as a ball. So let's look at, take a look at this example. So let's take a look at this example when the object was apple. So apple shape is round, so shape is 1, and the texture is 1 because apple is uh, very, has the smooth uh, texture. And here I gave weight 1 and the weight 2 and bias here. Normally in the deep learning, we need to uh, we need to find out the weight and bias. But in this video, I just gave the value here so that this video just focus on this multi-input neuron. So I gave W1 uh, is 0, W2 is 1, and bias is minus 1. So here, the calculation is when the apple came to the robot's hand, since the shape is 1, round, and the texture is 1, the smooth texture, 
1 times 0 is 0 and the 1 times 1 is 1 and the plus bias is minus 1 so this uh, eventually became a uh, 0 because this calculation results in 0 so if the 0 is the net input then from this activation function 0 means 1 so this activation output is going to be 1 so what was the output 1? it was apple so the robot predicts apple uh, perfectly here then what if the ball is on the robot's hand then the shape is 1 but the texture is 0 because it's not the smooth texture so 1 by 0 is 0 0 by 1 is 0 minus 1 so this net input is now minus 1 the minus 1 goes to the activation function here and the minus 1 here returns 0 so what was the output 0? output 0 was ball so the robot predict ball very well perfectly so apple ball robot uh, predict very well with these two example so in this diagram you can see the uh, apple and the ball is linearly separable the perceptron is working perfectly when this pattern is linearly separable and for example, if even if we give something not round shape apple or something not round ball here, the perceptron we designed uh, actually uh, well well perfectly uh, recognize the pattern here with this linearly separable line. So if you have time, just stop the video and uh, you can just calculate with uh, not round apple and the elliptical ball here. But the perceptron only recognizes linearly separable pattern. For example, uh, here's end operation. End operation, and you can see, as you can see here, we can linearly separable this one. So in this example, I gave the weight one as 0 0.6, weight two as 0 0.6, and bias as zero. Uh, if you have time, you can calculate yourself and uh, and as activation function threshold and one here. And uh, here is the answer. So uh, if we have time, just stop the video and uh, you can calculate yourself. It will be very helpful to you. And here's the perceptron works on the OR operation as well. So here's the example. If you give the weight 1 as 1.1 and the weight 2 as 1.1 by a 0 and the activation function threshold 1 here, then uh, here's the answer. But the thing is this a multi-input neuron cannot operate something is not linearly separable something like the exclusive or operation as you can see this cannot be linearly separable so when the people uh, in the uh, years ago found this one then the people thought that this uh, perceptron cannot work very well in many real situation world problem so many people didn't love this perceptron until somebody found a way to use the perceptron in the multiple layer. So we can talk about the multiple layer perceptron in the next video. And in this video, I think I have covered everything I want to talk. Okay, thank you very much. And I will see you on the next video.